Allow me to paint a scenario for you. So you're walking in your favorite grocery store and you're minding your vegan business, right? And you happen to see a product that says plant-based. So you and your veganist get super excited. You grab this plant-based item and then when you turn to see the ingredients, it says may contain milk. <gasps> now you're probably thinking what the hells, right? But I have two things to say to you. Number one, you're not alone in your frustration. Lots of vegans are finding plant-based products to actually contain dairy products, which makes them very upset. Number two is, did you know that the plant-based logo is actually not meant for you? Yeah, you. The vegan. This logo's for you. This logo's not for you. You may be thinking to yourself, that's a little ridiculous. It's plant-based, absolutely. But the plant-based logo is actually not meant for vegans. It's meant for people that are considered flexitarians or people who basically just wanna cut down their consumption of animal, but not all the way. I'll be leaving links down below to all the information that I have found regarding plant-based if you're interested in checking it out. But in this video, I'm gonna be talking about the difference between vegan and plant-based and what that means for you as a vegan. So I'm in a few vegan groups and I've seen a lot of people outraged at the fact that they have milk derivatives or there's milk, anything dairy, or sometimes even meat can be in items that have the plant-based seal on them. At first I was confused as well. Didn't make any sense. Why would there be animal products and something that says plant-based? So I decided to research it. So what is plant-based considered to be? So universally, plant-based items are considered to be items that while they contain mostly plants, they still have meat products in them as well. The logo is basically meant to say, this item has a lot of things that are made from plants, but they're still meat products and animal products in it. So earlier I just mentioned that plant-based is mostly used for flexitarians. You may be asking yourself, what the hell is a flexitarian? A flexitarian diet basically is a person who mostly follows a plant-based diet, meaning they incorporate mostly fruits and veggies, but it doesn't eliminate meat products. So that's why it's kind of in the middle of vegetarian and a vegan diet. The plant-based seal is made for people mostly like that, who wanna stay basically in the middle or who maybe wanna to transition to vegetarian slash or vegan. The plant-based logo focuses more on what the food is made of rather than what's not in your food. Also for anyone that's interested, plant-based foods are independently certified by the NSF. The NSF International is National Sanitation Foundation. They are a global independent organization that tests and audits products and services. So I think a lot of the reasons why a lot of people have been getting really upset with plant-based products is, once again, it gives the impression that it is vegan because it says plant-based. I think another thing that might be upsetting people is when you have vegan giants like Gardein partnering up with companies such as Marie Callender's, Healthy Choice, and Bird's Eye teaming up to make frozen foods. Now Gardein has their own line of skillet meals and they are fully vegan, but I can understand how a vegan would be upset when they walk in, they grab something that says plant-based and it has the Gardein name and you're trusting the Gardein name. I think it doesn't matter what other name is on it because you're seeing the name that you trust. So you're gonna go ahead and trust them. But I think as a vegan, it also upsets a lot of people to know that a predominantly vegan company is teaming up with companies that aren't vegan. Kind of makes this question, what's Gardein's purpose in doing all this? So Gardein is actually owned by a company that owns meat companies. <laughs> Have you guys ever heard of the brand Canagra? Well, they also own Earth Balance as well. So they're a bigger brand that owns a bunch of several different brands. And these big brand companies only have one thing on their mind. Money. Like most of the world, right? So what does that mean for people like us? Can we trust these vegan brands? Are they gonna somehow be influenced by the brands that they're owned by? Or do we look at this as a good thing because they're seeing value in our vegan brands, so they're buying them and wanting to help them produce and be bigger? I think in the long run, of course, they're looking to make money, but I think it's nice to know that our vegan companies are getting picked up and then they're getting the money that they need in order to mass produce. I had actually reached out to the Annie's company at one point to ask them about that because back in 2014, CNBC had reported that General Mills brought the Annie's company for $280 million. Now at the time, I was eating Annie's and I was concerned about how that was going to, I don't know, maybe change the brand. I really thought that it was going to change the brand. As a consumer, I was concerned because I had come to trust them. And of course, the lady reassured me that nothing was going to change that you know it's good for us because we get money and now we can we can grow and, and produce bigger 
<laughs> and I was like, okay, sounds cool, right? Sounds great. What ended up happening was their brand did change. It wasn't, you know, like I, I <laughs> wasn't just me, I swear to God. I looked up online and a lot of people were complaining. There was a lot of mothers that specifically that were complaining about the product tasting. To me, the product tasted like, like chalk. It just tasted weird. It started tasting so off. And almost off to the point where I almost thought it was spoiled. Like it had a weird sour taste to it. And it was, it was all kinds of wrong. Reminds me of that cow stomach I told you guys about in the last video. And unfortunately, this is a very common thing. Most of our vegan brands that we've come to trust are owned by bigger companies that are not vegan companies. I actually found a really cool website that shows you and breaks it down of like companies that are independently vegan or own vegan, fully vegan. And then there's companies, there's a list of companies that are vegan, but are owned by companies that are not vegan. So I'll put that in the link down below so that you guys can look through it and, you know, kind of go on, for, continue your own research from there and give you power. But I think it's a very important thing to talk about this because I think while it sucks that they're owned by meat companies, I think it's actually a very good thing. I feel like it's a step forward. This could encourage people that, you know, usually turn a blind eye to veganism to actually give it a try if they see more of these products being produced. And who knows, maybe once these vegan companies have enough footing, they'll maybe buy their own rights back and be a separate entity of a company. I think a lot of times what ends up happening too is you kind of be like, you know, well, I mean, if they sold out, how vegan can they really be? I don't think they're about the animals. <laughs> it's easy to think that way, but I think from, if you look at it from like maybe a business standpoint, it might help you to really understand that they probably did it or most likely did it to just grow their brand. Growing their brand is the most important thing to them. So if they're given a good opportunity, I mean, they'd be crazy to not take it. But at the same time, you could also argue that there are companies that are doing it without the help of meat companies. And I, th I think another important thing to look at too is that these companies are spending a lot of money to buy these companies and they're valuing these vegan companies extremely high. Gardein was valued at a $30 billion company. Like. Hello? <laughs> Which is kind of like them saying that they're valuing veganism at 30 billion. This can be a $30 billion industry. Once again, could panic us because then you have a lot of companies that are not vegan, don't understand the cause of vegan and don't really care about what vegan stands for and just want to profit off of us. Companies like Hellman's. You know, with knowing everything that you know, do you as a consumer feel comfortable still buying from these brands? If you owned a vegan company, how would you feel about a bigger company that owned meat companies wanting to buy your brand? Is that something you think you'd actually like or go for in order to grow your brand? I think at the end of all, we can be happy that we're making progress. We can be happy that more and more companies are joining in this vegan journey, whether it's for sneaky reasons of just making a quick buck or it's actual vegan companies like Follow Your Heart that really believe in stopping animal cruelty. And I feel like those are the businesses that we should support because either way we look at it, we benefit from it. The more it continues to grow, the more people are willing to give veganism a shot. Isn't that what we all want? So what are your thoughts now on plant-based versus vegan? Did I, did I teach you anything? I would love to know if I did, because I like teaching. <laughs> I love learning and I love teaching. But anyways, that's about me, more about you. I hope that it opened your eyes and gives you some sort of hope about maybe the future of veganism. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please let me know in the comments down below how you feel about the whole plant-based versus vegan. Where do you stand on the spectrum? What are your debates? How you feel about honey? Is honey vegan? Do you think honey's vegan? Save the bees. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll catch you on the next one. See ya. You okay? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I heard crying. I don't know why. Not from me. <laughs> Are you hearing La Llorona? What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> don't listen to that bitch.